be back after the game. Our live coverage from Chase Field continues next with Mike and Sam. Go Rangers! Brought to you locally by the Clay Cooley Auto Group. Well, being a baseball fan and a Rangers fan, I always thought there was a glimmer of hope that uh, something special is going to happen. So much passion and love for this franchise and, and love for our fans. Start thinking about all of that stuff and being a little kid in your backyard playing wiffle ball and announcing World Series games in your backyard. It all comes together and it, and it tugs at your heart. To hear our fans cheering, let's go Rangers. And I'm with you. I'm a Rangers fan and I'll be there till, till I can be. Welcome to the World Series on Fox 4. Texas Rangers have been waiting 52 seasons for a moment that could come tonight. And there are more <laughs> Ranger fans in the house here in Phoenix than we've seen the last couple of nights, that's for sure. If things go well, this team could hoist its first ever World Series championship trophy just a few hours from now here in Arizona. Just don't tell the players that. They say they're preparing for game five like any other ball game, even as the anticipation builds both here and back home in North Texas. Hello again from Chase Field in Phoenix. I'm Mike Ducey. Welcome to uh, our pregame coverage of Game 5 of the World Series. Rangers up three games to one. Got chills from that open, Mike, with Chuck Morgan That's there right. setting the tone for the night. And, Mike, the Rangers have endured all kinds of obstacles to get to this point. They've endured injuries, but just the road to get here. They lost the division on the final day of the regular season, swept the Rays, swept the Orioles, took the Astros to seven games in the ALCS, one on the road, and here they are with their first opportunity to end it all and to win their first World Series title in franchise history. First time they've ever been up three games to one in the series. I know what happened in 2011. They were up three games to two, and they went to St. Louis, and things didn't go so well feels like a different circumstance this time but they have to get it done on the field to close it out and that could come here at Chase Field tonight as Nathan Evaldi goes to the mound for the Rangers we'll have more on him in a moment yesterday was kind of a weird day for this team it started off with some really bad news on the uh, injury front the emotional hit that came with Adolis Garcia and Max Scherzer being removed from the roster that did not phase this team, as you know, at least not on the field. The Rangers overwhelmed the Diamondbacks with five runs in the second, five more in the third. Now they turn their focus toward a closeout victory. Manager Bruce Bochy in his fifth World Series. He won three of his first four. He says it's all business for now. I don't get caught in where we're at. And I'm being honest, um, you know, we're just focused on the game tonight. And the guys have done a great job of that all year. They're doing the same thing in the postseason. Um, we we got to focus on the task ahead of us. So that's that's where I'm at. Rangers will have a, a slight tweak to their lineup tonight. Simeon and Seeger in the top two spots. Evan Carter moves back to the number three spot. Mitch Garver bats cleanup. Josh Young remains at number five. Three for four night last night, followed by Lowe and Heim and Tavares. Yes, Travis Jankowski gets his second straight start at right field for the injured Adolis Garcia. What an outing for Jankowski in his World Series debut last night, Mike. So now in terms of the pitching, the Rangers are going to turn to their ace, big game Nate, Mr. Nathan Avaldi, in hopes of closing out this World Series tonight. Funny enough, Mike, Avaldi made his major league debut on this very field back on August 26th in 2011. Avaldi had been rock solid in his first four starts of the postseason, all wins. He started out sharp in game one last Friday, but Arizona's pesky lineup got to him starting in the third but Evo did not make it out of the fifth like several Rangers pitchers this year he missed some time with injury Avaldi says he's thankful for the pitching depth that he's gotten that, that has gotten the Rangers to this very point I mean it's very tough I feel like if the teams that I've been on if you've been able to keep your starting rotation healthy then you know you end up most of the time being in the postseason I feel like um, I think we came into this season with seven starters 
and then we picked up two more along the way and had, having other guys step up in that role that were our long man out of the bullpen and coming back into the rotation. A few guys go down, but you know, you, you're know you going to have to face a little bit of adversity in the season to have success. And I feel like that was one of our main things this year is we've been able to, we had a lot of key players, not even just pitchers, but a lot of guys step up when other guys went down and fill in their role nicely. Yeah, this sets up well for the Rangers. Clearly, you know, Evaldi 4-0 in this this postseason. It's got the kind of makeup that you, you like to see from a pitcher in this kind of uh, situation. It, it's funny because there's all different types of personalities that can be successful. We talk about Scherzer being a yeah. high-strung guy. Evaldi, not soft-spoken, but very thoughtful, very measured mm -hmm. in his comments, and very deliberate on the mound. Yeah, his demeanor says it all, Mike. We said earlier, the Rangers have been such road warriors, 10-0 on the road this postseason. But Mr. Evaldi has also been that. He is 3-0 on the road in these playoffs. And with a victory tonight, Mike, Evaldi would tie Randy Johnson, Steven Strasburg, and Francisco Rodriguez for the most wins in a single postseason with five. So, again, a good man's have on the mound if you're the Rangers. Evaldi faces the same uh, Diamondbacks lineup that he saw in game one. Corbin Carroll leading off for Arizona. Ketel Marte hits second, followed by Moreno, Walker, and Pham. Then Guriel, Thomas, Longoria, and uh, Longoria, and Perdomo. And just like in game one, Zach Gallen starts game five for Arizona tonight. All right, coming up, the Rangers and their fans, they know it's way too early to celebrate, even though they are up three games to one. On the other side of the break, we hear what they have to say about being in position to win it all as soon as tonight. We'll be right back. Fox for the championship. Brought to you locally by the Clay Cooley Auto Group. Texas Rangers are one win away from their first world championship. Winning a World Series, it's not an easy thing to do, Mike. Just ask the Rangers, who have yet to do it in their 63 years of existence, which goes back to their time when the franchise was in Washington as well. Now, there's champagne and beer cooling somewhere <laughs> in the tunnels down uh, off the field here, just in case there's a celebration in the Ranger Clubhouse tonight. The players, though, of course, they're not celebrating yet. They know there's a lot of work to do. Our Jeff Kolb is down on the field here at, uh, at Chase Field with more on that story. Jeff? Guys, for the Rangers fans old enough to remember the last time this team was in the World Series, there is a shared PTSD. 2011, Game 6, twice. This team was one strike away from winning their first title. Now they're back on the doorstep, of course, but to finish the job, they must finish off the answer backs. Yes, this will be an uphill task for Arizona to win three straight elimination games, but we have seen that type of comeback pulled off several times before. Teams that have trailed 3-1 in a seven-game playoff series have come back to win 15% of the time in the World Series, we've seen the champion come back six times after trailing 3-1. to one. Most recently, it was Aroldis Chapman, now Rangers reliever, and the Chicago Cubs in 2016. The D-backs just won back-to-back -back elimination games in the NLCS over the Phillies to make this World Series. So while the Rangers are so close again, they know any time spent thinking about a title celebration, that champagne right now would be a mistake. Rangers have never won a, a, a series and you have a chance this time tomorrow to be celebrating. How do you not think about that? How do you stay level-headed and not enter into that kind of thinking? Um, you have to because it very well could not happen. You, know, you got to come out and play good baseball. So it's all about trying to get one more win now. Don't think about it. Don't let it. Don't let it sink it, or don't let it get in your mind. Don't let it um, be more than it is. We just gotta go out there and play one more good baseball game, and if that happens, great. For the contingent of Texas fans that would love to see a game six because that would give the Rangers a chance to clinch the title on home turf in front of their home crowd, that's a dangerous game. 
Max Scherzer, Dolis Garcia, both out, of course, now for the series. They can't help you. And this team has been much better, of course, here on the road than at home. So the last thing you want, if you're a Rangers fans, guys, is game seven. Yeah, no doubt about it, Jeff. Don't go anywhere because you had a chance to talk with Big Poppy, so stick around uh, for that conversation that's coming up in just a few minutes. Much more ahead on our pregame look at Game 5. The Rangers are the 3-1 lead in the World Series. Chuck Morgan joins us, the longtime voice of the ballpark, now Globe Life Field. He's seen pretty much everything in Rangers history. His thoughts on what could be a new type of history tonight here in this ballpark. Stay with us. Back live at Chase Field at Phoenix. Well, here we are. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Here we are. Doing our uh, pregame show <laughs> with uh, Game 5 of the World Series coming up. Rangers leading the Diamondbacks three games to one. Texas obviously with a chance to clinch tonight. Chuck Morgan is with us. He has a fancy title with the Rangers, Executive Vice President, Ballpark Entertainment, Promotions and Production. You know him as the voice of Globe Life Field. He's been with the club since 1983. What are your emotions, Chuck, as you enter this night with knowing this club has a chance to win it all for the first time? Well, these days, Mike, uh, great to have, have you all out here, and it's great to be here with you. Uh, these days, at the drop of anything, I start crying. So I, I did a <laughs> toast to our front office the other day. We toasted the team, and uh, <laughs> it gets emotional. And it, it's just having been here a long time and uh, really wanting something special to happen for all of our fans. Emotions are a good thing. It's good to let it all out sometimes. Speaking of emotions, you know this Rangers fan base better than anyone, probably. You've been with them on this roller coaster ride. You were there for 2011. Some Rangers fans, as our Jeff Kolb said, have a little PTSD about what could happen. What would be your message to them uh, going forward here tonight? Just hang in there. Let's hope something special happens. And, and you were mentioning some of the, there might be some items available for celebration. When we came in the tunnel on the bus, I turned my head away from the, the stage where they do the post game, whatever. So <laughs> I turned my head away. Speaking of fans, I hear that the party back at the at, in Arlington at Globe Life is going to be bigger than ever tonight. I, they're telling me there's going to be like 17,000 people there, and oh, it's wow. sold out, and it's it's going to be a. It, you're right, it's going to be a big party. Again, it's it's dangerous. Jeff referenced this as well to uh, wish in any way if you're a Rangers fan that the team could clinch back home because you you want to win it when you can win it. But is there any part of you as the guy who would be behind the mic? <laughs> for a clincher in the ballpark back at Arlington that wishes that just maybe that would happen. I, I do for our fans. I would want them to be there to see something like that happen. But they can watch Fox 4 tonight and let's get this thing over with <laughs> and let's get it back home. And I, as much as I would want that, I'm ready to get this over right here. What has it meant to you, Chuck, to be the PA announcer for the Rangers for so many years? Well, it's, it, you know, I'm a baseball fan, have been far back as I can remember and uh, to be in that position and working for a major league baseball team you know uh, I tell everybody Sam I used to, I'm still doing what I did when I was five and six years old I would be out in the backyard with a wiffle ball and <laughs> announcing the players doing play by play so I'm, I'm basically doing the same thing and you know uh, Mike mentioned that fancy title. I really don't work. I have fun. So. Never worked a day in your life, right? No, never have. <laughs> I thought I was the only dork who did that with the <laughs> wiffle ball. In his, in no, his, in there's a lot of us. In his backyard. Who are some of the people you'll be thinking about tonight if the Rangers can wrap this up? Maybe other people like you who've been with this club through thick and thin. Eric, Eric Nadell. I want this for Eric. Uh, Matt Hicks, those guys. Uh, and then some of the, the ex-players and ex-ranger players that didn't get a chance to uh, feel something like this uh, a lot of those guys so what about Bruce Bochy and the job that he's done I don't know if you've counted how many managers you've you've been in, in office for has I've to ran be a, few out a couple of town. dozen <laughs> <laughs> Bochy and yeah, obviously the, the players do it and he'll be the first to tell you that but there's something about that Bochy magic that's real right you know Mike I said something to Chris Young way back I think it was in January I was driving home one night listening to Bochi on uh, XM radio somewhere and just listening to him. I, and I had to call Chris the next day and say, this guy is awesome. It's great. To, just to, And it's got to be great to play for a guy like that. So, I, yeah, he's done it. He's done one heck of a job. Quick keys to the game tonight, Chuck. What do the Rangers got to do to seal it? 
Well, last night I predicted the the, the outbreak there, the Big Ten run. So uh, tonight, and I had said that Josh Young needed to step up, Simeon needed to step up, and I think that's the key again tonight. And if we get a great uh, game out of uh, Nathan Navaldi, we should be in pretty good shape. He's the guy you want on the yeah. mound right. exactly. like tonight, right? Exactly. You predicted back-to-back five-run innings. Is that yes. what you're telling me? Yes, yes I did. <laughs> wow. <laughs> predicted history. So and I predicted the Simeon home run. So. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Chuck Morgan, thanks so much for, yeah, for coming up you. and joining thank us. You. We're seeing a lot more Ranger fans in this oh, park yeah, tonight. I've run into people from Waco, Dallas, Fort Worth. There's a lot of folks out here. Showing uh, out. Chuck, enjoy <laughs> the game you. and what could be a huge thank night for much. this franchise. Still ahead, a Hall of Famer who knows all about the uh, World Series and now does some work for us on Fox. We'll hear from Big Poppy, David Ortiz, next. Thank you. Guys, I'm here with Big Poppy Ortiz, one of the greatest playoff performers of all time. You had so many clutch moments. We've seen Adolis Garcia have those moments for the Rangers, Corey Seager. What goes into being clutch in these moments? Man, uh, Take a lot of focus, take a lot of uh, preparation, yeah. you know, and uh, at this level, uh, there's always room to be able to do that, but it all depends how far you want to go. I don't know what else we can say about the resilience from the Rangers, right? You lose Garcia and Scherzer yesterday, and they, they do it. They did 11-7. What impressed you most about the bounce back? Well, we talk about... We talk about that in the set, and reality is, it seems like the Texas Rangers, they're taking it very, very personal. They know yeah. that one, one, one of their big-time players went down, and you got no other choice of, but having somebody else to step in and do whatever it takes to continue winning. Uh, Jankowski came in, got a couple of hits right away, who himself in a situation, I mean, he said in the interview, I'm not Garcia because I don't have the power that he has, but I'm going to play my game and try to help the ball club and whatever I could. Finally, part of the reason you're such a legend, you helped the Red Sox and their 86-year curse. This Rangers team has been around for 63 years, still looking for their first title. How does it change your life to win that first one for a franchise? It's always amazing. I remember our first championship in Boston, 86 years waiting to win a championship. I'm pretty sure the whole Texas, uh, uh, the Rangers uh, fans, because obviously Houston have won several times. But yeah, we don't they, care about Houston. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so uh, uh, um, I brought Houston in because it's on the Texas area, you know what I'm saying? But we're talking about Rangers right now, and the, and the fans for the Rangers are really uh, expecting some big like that to happen so they can enjoy it. I remember celebrating in Boston how everything went down, and the fans was like, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to happen exactly the same thing once the Rangers take over. Let's hope. Poppy, have a great show. So Thank great you, to meet you. Guys, you. back to you. All right, the Boston gal in me. Yeah. Thank you, Big Poppy, for your years of service. We'll got to get his <laughs> Texas City straight, though. <laughs> we'll see if the Texas Rangers can get it done tonight and win their first World Series. We're back after this to wrap things up. Photojournalist John Ganan with a, an exclusive behind-the-scenes look at Chase Field. This is where the Rangers could wrap it up tonight. That is cool. Uh, the pool. pool. You know, yeah. you never know. If the Rangers win tonight, Mike, maybe some of them will head to the pool and uh, celebrate in that way. I would think that a uh, DFW area sportscaster who is a collegiate swimmer might. <laughs> oh no! Might want to jump no, in. You're not going to see me in there tonight. There's by Jeff. No means. There's Jeff behind <laughs> the scenes. He's always he's always working. Always Johnny, working, Johnny always G. moving. Nice job with the time lapse. Let's get some final thoughts before we give it up to the guys from Fox. Jeff Cole back on the field here at Chase. Jeff, what do you think? Yeah, how about Corey Seager? What more can we say? You know, you have to give credit to this front office. Two years ago, they give him $325 million deal. He's been worth every penny of it, even though before that point, in seven seasons with the Dodgers, never hit more than 30 home runs. Boy, has he been clutch. You know, and as comfortable as he is cleaning out these fastballs for no doubter home runs, he's equally as uncomfortable talking about his postseason prolifics.
We win one more win, you have the chance to want to be the MVP. Second time that you got here, what's that feel? Uh, that's <laughs> not in my mind. Where did you with two run homers and Ranger wins in a series so far? Um, I don't know. We're just trying to put good at bats together. I know you're generally not one to want to talk about yourself, but Major League Baseball took the stat out earlier tonight that you have now played in the exact same number of games. You have one more home run and the exact same number of postseason RBIs as Reggie Jackson. When you're in that kind of company, how does that hit you as, as a baseball fan and as a baseball player? Um, yeah, obviously that's pretty special, you know, to be compared to a guy like that. Um, it's probably something you'll navigate towards the end of the year, but right now it's you're more focused on tomorrow. Tomorrow is now, guys. He's hit four home runs in his last five games. If the Rangers wrap this up tonight, he likely takes home his second World Series MVP. All right, thanks, Jeff. I think Nathan Avaldi gets his fifth win of the postseason tonight. I think the Rangers get it done. All right, uh, the coverage starts on Fox, continues after us. First pitch just after 7, and we're back right after the game with post-game, perhaps celebration coverage from the Rangers Clubhouse. Enjoy the ball game. We'll see you again soon.